Today we celebrate St. Dominic Savio. He was an Italian adolescent student of St. John Bosco. He was studying to be a priest when he became ill and died at the age of 14, possibly from pleurisy. He is the only person of his age group who was declared a saint, not on the basis of his having been a martyr, but on the basis of having lived what was seen as a holy life. He was noted for his piety and devotion to his faith, and was eventually canonized. St. John Bosco regarded Savio very highly and wrote a biography of his young student, The Life of Dominic Savio. This volume, along with other accounts of him, were critical factors in his cause for sainthood, despite the fact that many people considered him to have died at too young an age, 14, to be considered for sainthood, he was considered eligible for such singular an honor on the basis of his having displayed heroic virtue in his everyday life. Savio was canonized a saint on June 12 of 1954 by Pope Pius XII, making him the youngest nun martyr to be canonized in the Catholic Church until the canonizations of Francisco and Jacinta Marto, the pious visionaries of Fatima, in 2017. On April 2nd of 1842, in the village of Verriva, two miles from the town of Chieri in Piedmont, northern Italy, a son was born to Carlo and Brigitte Savio. He was given the name Domenico at baptism. The name Domenico means of the Lord, and the surname Savio means wise. His parents had ten children in all. His father was a blacksmith and his mother a seamstress. They were poor, hard-working, and pious. When he was two years old, his parents returned to their native place at Murialdo, on the outskirts of Castelnuovo d'Asti, and from where they had gone to Riva in 1841. His parents took great right here to give him a Christian upbringing. By the age of four, Dominic was able to pray by himself, and was occasionally found in solitude praying. John Bosco records that Savio's parents recollect how he used to help his mother around the hells, welcome his father home, say his prayers without being reminded, even reminding others when they forgot, and say grace at mealtimes unfailingly. Father Giovanni Zucca from Murialdo, who was then the chaplain at Murialdo when Dominic was five years old, notes in a statement to John Bosco that he came to notice Dominic due to his regular church attendance with his mother and his habit of kneeling down outside the church to pray, even in the mud or snow, if he happened to come to church before it had been unlocked in the morning. The chaplain also notes that Savio made good progress at the village school not merely due to his cleverness, but also by working hard. He would not join the other boys in doing something that he believed to be morally wrong and would explain why he thought a particular deed was wrong. At the age of five, he learned to serve Mass and would try to participate at Mass every day as well as go regularly to confession. Having been permitted to make his first communion at an early age, he had much reverence for the Eucharist. At that time, it was customary for children to receive their first communion at the age of 12. Pope Pius X would later lower this age to seven. After initial hesitation and subsequent consultation with other priests, the parish priest agreed to permit Dominic to receive his first communion at the age of seven, since he knew the catechism and understood something of the Eucharist. He spent much time praying and reading in preparation, asking his mother's forgiveness for anything he might have done to displease her, and then went to church. In his biography of Dominic Savio, John Bosco devotes a chapter to tell of Dominic's first communion. He says that several years later, whenever Dominic talked of the day of his first communion, he said with joy, that was the happiest and most wonderful day of my life. John Bosco records that on the day of his first communion, Dominic made some promises which he wrote in a little book and reread them many times. John Bosco once looked through Dominic's book and he quotes from it the promises that he made. 
Resolutions made by me, Dominic Savio, in the year 1849, on the day of my first communion at the age of seven. One, I will go to confession often and as frequently to Holy Communion as my confessor allows. Two, I wish to sanctify the Sundays and festivals in a special manner. Three, my friends shall be Jesus and Mary. Four, death rather than sin. For secondary education, Dominic had to go to another school, and it was decided he would go to the county school at Castel Nuovo, three miles from his home. Castel Nuovo d'Asti, now Castel Nuovo Gian Bosco, was the birthplace of another contemporary of Gian Bosco, Joseph Cofasso, also a saint. He was four years the senior of Gian Bosco and was Bosco's mentor and advisor. Now ten years old, Dominic walked daily to and from school. In his biography of Dominic Savio, John Bosco records how a local farmer once asked Dominic on a hot sunny day if he was not tired from walking and received the reply, Nothing seems tiresome or painful when you are working for a master who pays well. Don Bosco also notes that Dominic refused to go swimming with his friends since Dominic considered that in such a situation it would be also easy to offend God. He believed that on a previous occasion his friends behaved in what was to him a vulgar manner. In his biography, Bosco records that Father Alora, the head of the school, had this to say about Dominic. Hence, it may very well be said that he was Savio wise, not only in name, but in fact, namely, in his studies, in piety, in conversation, and his dealing with others, and in all his actions. To test Dominic's intelligence, Don Bosco gave him a copy of the Catholic Readings, asking him to recite a particular page by heart and explain its meaning the next day, and then spoke for a while with Dominic's father. Ten minutes later, he found Dominic was beside him, reciting the page and explaining its meaning satisfactorily. This meaning was the beginning of their relationship, the result of which was that John Bosco agreed to take Dominic to Turin with him. Around six months after Dominic had come to the oratory, he had the occasion to listen to a talk on sainthood. John Bosco records that the talk had three main points that impressed Dominic. One, that it is God's will that each one should become a saint. Two, that it is easy to become a saint. Three, that there is a great reward waiting in heaven for those who try to become saints. This inspired Dominic to take a conscious decision to become a saint. The immediate result of this was that, not being sure how to live a saintly life and worried about it, he was quiet and worried for the next few days. Noticing this, John Bosco spoke to Dominic and advised him to resume his customary cheerfulness, persevere in his regular life of study and religious practices, and especially not neglect being with his companions in games and recreation. On learning that his first name meant belonging to God, his desire to be a saint intensified. Dominic's spiritual growth progressed under the guidance of Don Bosco. Clifford Stevens says in his biography of Savio, in other circumstances, Dominic might have become a little self-righteous snob, but Don Bosco showed him the heroism of the ordinary and the sanctity of common sense. In his desire to become a saint, Dominic attempted to perform physical penances, like making his bed uncomfortable with small stones and pieces of wood, sleeping with a thin covering in winter, wearing a hair shirt, and fasting on bread and water. When his superiors, John Bosco or his rector or his confessor, came to know this, they forbade him from doing bodily mortification as it would affect his health. John Bosco told Dominic that as a schoolboy, the best penance would be to perform all his duties with perfection and humility, and that obedience was the greatest sacrifice. Thus, Dominic formed an important aspect of his philosophy of life, which was, in his words, I can't do big things, but I want everything to be for the glory of God. 
Don Bosco notes that from that time on, Dominic did not complain about the food or the weather, and like some other boys at the oratory, bore all suffering cheerfully and practiced custody of his eyes and tongue. Eugenio Cheri, a salesman commentator on the autobiography of John Bosco, notes that by this time, owing to his experience as an educator, John Bosco's ideas on several pedagogical and spiritual principles were well developed and linked, and this led him to associate the fulfillment of daily duties with holiness in his advice to Savio. Dominic's health was steadily deteriorating, so he was sent home to recover. In his first four days at home, his appetite decreased and his cough worsened. This prompted his parents to send him to the doctor who at once ordered bed rest. Inflammation was diagnosed and, as was the custom of the time, the doctor decided to perform bloodletting. The doctor cut Dominic's arm ten times in the space of four days, and it is now considered that this probably hastened his death. In his biography, John Bosco records that Dominic was calm throughout the procedure. The doctor assured his parents that the danger had passed and now it only remained for him to recuperate. Dominic, however, was sure that his death was approaching and asked that he be allowed to make his confession and receive communion. Though they thought it unnecessary, his parents sent for the parish priest who heard Dominic's confession and administered the Eucharist. After four days, despite the conviction of the doctor and his parents that he would get better, Dominic asked that he be given the anointing of the sick in preparation for death. Again, his parents agreed to please him. On March 9, he was given the papal blessing, and he said the confite or Don Bosco records that throughout these days he stayed serene and calm. On the evening of March 9, 1857, after being visited by his parish priest, he asked his father to read him the prayers for the exercise of a happy death from his book of devotions. Then he slept a while and shortly awakened and said in a clear voice, Goodbye, Dad, goodbye. But was it the parish priest suggested to me? I don't seem to remember. Oh, what wonderful things I see. With these words, Dominic died, though at first it appeared to his father that he was asleep. Dominic's father wrote in a letter to John Bosco, conveying the news of the death of his son. With my heart full of grief, I send you the sad news. Dominic, my dear son, and your child in God, like a white lily, like Aloysius Gonzaga, gave his soul to God on March 9, after having received with the greatest devotion the last sacraments and the papal blessing. Several incidents in St. Dominic Savio's life are worth noting. At the school at Mondonio, for example, one day, in the absence of his teacher, two of Dominic's classmates stuffed the room-heating iron stove with snow and rubbish as a prank. Fearing expulsion, they blamed Dominic. Father Culiero, in charge, soundly berated Dominic in front of the class, and Dominic bore this silently. The following day, the true culprits were discovered. On being asked why he had remained silent, Dominic replied that he had thought that he would be let off with the scolding, whereas the other boys might have been expelled. Dominic added that Jesus had remained silent when blamed unjustly, and that he was trying to imitate him. At the oratory once, two of his friends had a disagreement and decided to fight each other by throwing stones. As they were older and stronger than Dominic, he had been promoted from first form to second form, physical intervention was not possible. He tried to reason with them, but with no positive result. Thus, on the day of the fight, he went with them to the site where the fight was to take place, and, just before they could start, he placed himself between them, and, holding up his crucifix, requested that they throw their first stones at him. Ashamed, the two boys gave up their fight. Dominic then persuaded them to go to confession. Once John Bosco records that a boy who was visiting had brought with him a magazine with bad pictures, and a group of fascinated boys were looking. On finding out, St. Dominic snatched the magazine and tore it up, saying, You know well enough. That one look is enough to stain your souls, and yet you go feasting your eyes on this.